for the first Ikea hack, I wanted to make a woven pendant light or a woven wall sconce. And I'm gonna be using the Latad placemat that is sold at Ikea for just $6. Rattan is having such a moment in home decor right now, but newly more so with lighting and we're seeing a lot of very shallow woven pendant lights. So I thought these placemats would be perfect for this project. Also, I'm gonna be using the Hema light fixture. If you don't have an Ikea nearby, you can order something very similar off Amazon that I will link in the description box below. But I love a project like this because it is super straightforward. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my fabric tape measure and I'm measuring how much of this rattan I'm going to need to remove from this placemat. And basically, I just kind of dug my scissors into the rattan and then just snipped the thread to easily kind of push back on that rattan. And then I just connected those two pieces together. And with this light fixture that we just created, I think it is important to note that when the bulb is this exposed, you want to make sure that your light bulb is pretty, right? So I do have a couple options. I have this more vintage style kind of goldish tinged one that I do really like, but it's not really the direction I wanted to go for where these are going to be going. So I did opt for these other ones that I actually found from Walmart and they kind of have this modern take and I think that they just make it feel a little bit more high end than the vintage style one. And another thing that's nice about a project like this is I can have it just like a traditional pendant light hanging down or I can kind of prop it up against the wall to give it a totally different sort of effect. So just a couple different ideas for you. I did decide to put it flat back on the wall just because I feel like it looked better in my specific space, but I think either one would look great. And we are all in at only $11, making this a really budget-friendly option. For the next project, you guys know how much I love vintage and I love stools and especially wooden vintage stools. So I thought that I would use this Curie stool that is sold at Ikea for $21.99 US dollars. And I've actually hacked this stool in the past where I did a cane backing and you guys really liked that project a lot. But since that time, my style has definitely evolved. So I had another one of these stools lying around and I thought it might be a good idea to try to kind of recreate some of these really vintage or antique distressed stools that I've been loving recently. To start, I'm just going to take some 220 grit sandpaper and just sand all of the surfaces down from this stool. It actually doesn't take that long because the stool is relatively small and I just wanted to kind of start with like a clean slate because we are going to be staining this. What is nice is the stool doesn't come with a very like hard lacquer. I think sometimes with Ikea furniture, it has this like thick coating just to protect the furniture, but this one actually does not. So that is one benefit of the stool. And the challenge here is making something that is brand new and very Scandinavian style and make it feel like it's been worn in and lived in. So I'm taking a flathead screwdriver, I'm taking different tools, I'm hammering it down. And then the final thing I really wanted to do to give it that worn in look is to really deepen the grain. So I decided to take a fork and I just kind of made markings that followed the natural grain lines but made them deeper. Because if you ever look at vintage stools or antique stools, they have this sort of very deep graining that I so love. What's nice about a project like this is you can totally tailor it to your liking. If you didn't wanna do the distressing at all, you don't have to and you could just go right to the staining part, but I really wanted that distressed sort of feature. So I continued that kind of forking process all the way around and then I opted for a gel stain because I think that it's easier to layer gel stains in my personal opinion. So I just did about four coats of the walnut gel stain and I let 24 hours in between each coat. So I think that that is what gave it like a lot of depth because once I distressed it, some of that coloring from the stain was able to really like soak and deepen um, those markings. And I think that that's what makes it look old and worn in and vintage. Again, another buildable process. If you wanted to leave it a little bit lighter, do less coats of stain. If you wanted it darker, you could do more coats of stain. Um, but once I got to the point that I was really happy with the way that it was looking, I just did a matte clear sealer and I sealed the entire thing underneath, on the sides, on the legs. And once the sealer dried, I brought it upstairs to my bathroom where I wanna do a little styling moment. But that's what's so nice about Ikea furniture and Ikea hacks is they're already giving you a really great product. You just have to take it to your interior design style.
For the next IKEA hack, I really wanted to make a pin board for my office. And one great thing about IKEA is you can get fairly large sized frames for a very affordable price. So this one is a 24 by 36 and will cost you just under 23 US dollars. And comparable sized pin boards that are linen covered will cost you between 100 to up to $300. So this is a really good starting point with the price of this frame. And I didn't have any linen that would accommodate the size of this frame, but I did have a drop cloth. And I actually just saw Jorge Gomez from Casa Refined use this. Now his drop cloth was used and he used it as a piece of artwork. So I'm really just using it to cover the cork that I found at the thrift store. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just um, going to steam it really well just to get out all the wrinkles. And this cork board, I found it like independently. It didn't have a frame and it is for a 24 by 36, but it is just slightly smaller. So I knew I was going to have to cover it with that drop cloth. So the first thing I needed to do was just center that cork board on top of the backing of the Ikea frame. And then I kind of wanted to connect those two pieces together. So then that way, when I reupholster it with the drop cloth, everything stays nice and secure and nothing is kind of freestanding. So I just did so using some hot glue. I attached the back of the frame to the cork board and I primarily just applied the hot glue to the corners and then in between the longer of the two sides. And once the hot glue had dried and the pieces were pretty well connected together, I just needed now to kind of reupholster the cork board. And typically I would use a staple gun to reupholster something like this, but because the backing of the frame is so thin and the cork board was just a little too shallow as well, I did just opt for using again hot glue. So the first thing I did was I just kind of laid out the drop cloth and I picked the section that I liked the best because you can't really tell but there's like different colors in between the drop cloth that are actually really pretty. So I took my fabric scissors and I'm just cutting off the excess that I will not be using for the project leaving myself a good four inches all the way around. And whenever you're wrapping something like this that is a rectangle or a square, it's important to kind of wrap it as you would a present and just kind of work in sections and making 90 degree corners is the best way, in my opinion, to get the cleanest finish. A really nice thing about having a cork board or a pin board in your house is if you're like me and you're changing things up very often, it's nice to not have to try to find something that's this scale and kind of replace it every season. You can kind of just change what you're putting on the actual cork board to totally give it a new life all the time. The next project is probably the easiest of the bunch and that is just to make these tiered pedestal trays. I would say one of the best things that Ikea sells are these candlesticks. They're the full to lig candlesticks and they will cost you just under 15 US dollars. And honestly, that is such a good price for a set of three candlesticks. And the last time I was at the thrift store, I found these beautiful hearth and hand kind of organically shaped plates for just 50 cents a piece. So I am just going to stack these plates on top of these candlesticks. And really you can use these for anything. You can use them independently just for like shelf decor, or you could use them in a bathroom and put like soap on one, a sponge on the other, a hand towel on the other. You could also use them as dresser decor. You could put like, you know, jewelry on one, perfume on the other, you know, the opportunities for this are truthfully endless. To attach the two pieces together, I wouldn't use hot glue. I would either do E6000 or what I'm doing, which is super glue gel. And I'm just going to apply the smallest amount to the rim of the candlestick. And then I'm going to flip it upside down and place it in the center of the plate. And this is something I just eyeballed because this plate, to be honest, isn't totally symmetrical. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this and I'm just going to set this on top and let it dry for about an hour. Tier trays can oftentimes be really expensive. So the fact that I was able to make this for less than $17, I was really happy with.
And for the fifth and final IKEA hack for this video, I wanted to make some wall-mounted candle sconces. And the IKEA product that we're going to be using is the Ekby Valter wall brackets. I'm not sure if these are sold at IKEA anymore. When I was editing this video, I tried to find them and I could not. So these I did find at the thrift store and they were just 50 cents a piece. And this is actually my second time working with these brackets. I've made a set of bookends out of these before, just kind of taking a miter saw and removing the excess, painting them white, and again, a really modern look but this time I wanted to kind of stick with its intended purpose which is to place something on top of it um, but instead of placing a shelf I wanted to just do something a little bit different and give it a twist so I thought these would make the perfect thing for some candle wall sconces and I happened to find two black plates that were identical and the bottom said that they were not food safe so I think they are supposed to be used for candles because there's a warning about candles on the bottom as well and Unfortunately, I just found the plates. It didn't come with the glass pillar that is supposed to be attached to it. I'm assuming it's supposed to be attached to it. So I did end up purchasing two pillar glass jars that were just $4 a piece also at Walmart. And all I'm going to do is stick those glass jars inside of these black plates and then stick the candles inside of those glass jars. And these black plates are going to sit on top of our Ekby Valter um, wall brackets. And just for like a safety thing, if my kids are jumping around, I don't want them to knock the plate over and then the glass goes flying and then there's glass broken everywhere. So I did just add a little bit of super glue to the bottom of the plate. So then that way it would stay nice and secure if it did get like bumped or nudged. And because I don't like that you see that screw hole at the bottom, I just decided to add this push pin on top. So it just gave it a little bit more of a finished look. And that about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Tell me down in the comments which IKEA hack was your favorite, and I will see you next time. Bye.